All right, so in three, two. Good afternoon. As chair, I now call to order the June 26, 2023 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's policy review committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Wash, Ms. Pitts, or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you. Ms. Frimpong? Present. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you. Ms. Hassan? Dr. Savoy? And Ms. Pumphrey? Present. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Ms. Pitts, please call the roll to determine which staff members are present in this meeting. Yes, Ms. Joelle Bilski. Present. Thank you. Ms. Howie. Present. Ms. Wash. Here. Thank you. I will hand the meeting back over to you, Chair uh, Woman Pumphrey. Okay, thank you. Um, the first item on the agenda is B1 policy 0600 anti discrimination. For that, I call on Ms. Howie. Thank you, uh, Chair Pumphrey. Uh, members of the committee, I would ask that there be a slight adjustment to the agenda and that Ms. Bielski uh, proceed first, as all the other items on the agenda today are mine. Thank you. Is there any objection to moving the discussion of policy 0600 to the end of the agenda? No objection. This is Harvey. Hearing none, the agenda will be adjusted accordingly. The next item is item B2, policy 6301 school calendar. And for that, I call on Ms. Bielski. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to be here this afternoon. Um, at the April 18th, 2023 Board of Education meeting, the board recommitted the policy to the to this committee to respond to comments from TABCO, the Teachers Association, about legality. Specifically, it was claimed that the definition of religious holiday conflicted with employees' rights and collective bargaining. <clears throat> the response to the concerns state that the policy as presented and implemented neither requires nor inhibits an employee's right to engage in secretarian observances. The policy articulates how the board develops its annual calendar, school calendar specifically. Specifically, the current policy states that no testing or assessment should be scheduled on a religious holiday unless doing so would conflict with federal or state assessment requirements. This statement follows the board's express directive that the school calendar must observe mandated federal, state, and board approved assessments. This statement does not impact the master agreement or collective bargaining. Lastly, the education article provides that a public school employer may not negotiate the school calendar and the code is noted in this document. Thus, the school calendar is a prohibited subject of collective bargaining. Thank you. So I believe um, I believe the concern was exactly exactly what you mentioned regarding the um, collective bargaining and negotiations, and and so we've we've determined that that is not an issue with this particular policy. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Does anyone else have any discussion regarding the recommended changes to policy sixty three hundred one?
OK, if there are no suggestions to staff, then the policy will go will remain unchanged. The committee's report will reflect that policy 6301 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Ms. Bielski. Thank you. And may Ms. Bielski be excused? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Bielski. Thank you. And next on the agenda is item B1, policy 0600, anti-discrimination. And for that, I call on Ms. Howie. Thank you. Members of the committee, you have, um, as Ms. Pumphrey said, item B1, policy 0600, which is anti-discrimination. That policy has been recommitted to PRC following concerns expressed at the May 16th, 2023 Board of Education meeting. What you have in addition to an updated analysis and updated policy as well is a chart that summarizes staff's recommendations. I thought I tend to be visual. I thought this would be helpful as well. It seems as if part of the concerns with the language that was placed in policy 0600 had to do with whether or not the language was indeed necessary. So with respect to the language that the staff is recommending that we keep, we believe it's required by the statute. And I will elaborate. <laughs> On page three, line 21, uh, and that is uh, on your chart is number two. Uh, the recommendation was that staff remove the word protective from hairstyles. Um, and the specific comment was hairstyles worn predominantly by black people do not need the justification or qualifier to proceed hairstyle. Uh, we have based our uh, definition, we've taken it straight from state statute. And here is sort of the um, the Russian nesting doll uh, reason that we have included this particular language. The new section of the education article 26701 says that we have to use the state government articles definition of race. When you go to the state government article, race is defined as protective hairstyle uh, and protective hairstyle is defined in the state government article as includes braids, twists and locks. So for that reason, staff is recommending that we retain this definition. So I said you have to go to several other parts of the of state law. Staff has included in the analysis uh, the alternatives that were considered and one alternative that was considered was to define race uh, by simply referring to the state government article. However, the concern that staff had about this sort of bare bones recommendation or bare bones definition was that persons who read the policy will not know exactly what is prohibited and what your policy encompasses. They would have to know what the definition of the state government article is. So for that reason, um, page three, line 21, we recommend that the definition remain the same. Page three, line 39, again, the recommendation was to re revise the language of race to remove hairstyles. Um, we do not believe that based on the language in the state government article uh, that we should do that. Page four, line seven, and there was a recommendation to revise the definition of sex. Um, we have included our recommendation that that stay the same. With respect to those recommendations that have changed, page two, line eight, the request was to revise the definition of color. Staff is recommending using the language that is on the EEOC website. While there is no definition of color in Title VII, uh, there is um, uh, language that the commission uses that indicates color means pigmentation, complexion, skin shade, or tone. Um, on page, let's see, in the definitions on page four, it was recommended that we include cultural or religious headwear such as wraps, scarves, hijabs, shaitals. Uh, the state government article does not include such uh, a definition, but we do believe that uh, there would be no legal impediment to doing that. 
Um, as well, we revised the definition of religion on page two, line four, uh, to encompass headwear. And finally, we've included beard as a form of protective hairstyle uh, that given that that restriction is not in the state government article. So with that, um, I'm available to answer any questions or Ms. Wash can answer questions as my voice comes and goes. Thank you very much. The, the visual was very helpful for me, so I appreciate you putting that together for us, you and your staff putting that together for us. Um, does anyone have any questions or discussion? At this point? Uh, yes, this is uh, Robin Harvey. I just okay. want to make sure I'm understanding under the policy. Uh, I believe it's the definitions Q where it says sex an individual mm -hmm. sex, including the person's sexual sexual orientation, gender identity or pregnancy. That's correct. OK, can, can you help me understand that pregnancy piece? Sure, uh, because reasons for which an individual could be discriminated against could be their pregnancy status. Oh, OK, and they just put that in under sex. Mm -hmm. OK, understood. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or discussion? No questions. Okay, so do we need at this point for this policy, do we need to move forward? Do I need to um, have a roll call and move forward or it was this simply for discussion? I apologize, I'm uh, switching between screens. That's quite all right. So at this point, uh, the committee would decide whether or not it goes back to the board with the changes that have been recommended by staff. So and when it goes back to the board, it would go back on second reader since it's already been to first reader unless the board wants to have the public comment again about what was uh, what's been recommended since first reader since the last first reader. Okay. My understanding is that for the most part, most of our um, comments and suggestions came from board members and not from the public comment is my understanding. Um, so um, if if no one else has any objection, um, I think we could probably move forward for a second reader with this policy to bring it to bring it to the board. Um, does anyone have any objections to that? OK, hearing none policy. Um, what is it? Sorry. Zero six hundred. Thank you. Zero six hundred will move forward to second reader. Thank you, members of the committee. Thank you. OK, let's see what's um, next. This is board member from Pong. I just sure. have a question then. So the first policy, um, the 6301 did go for first reader. And we got the comments and then, but we're sending it back again for first reader and not second reader. Sorry, my apologies. I thought we were sending it back for second reader. Yes, I thought that's what I said. I did I misspeak? I, I believe we were I sending back for. I believe we were sending back for second reader, unless I misspoke. I apologize if I did. Okay, that's why I just wanted to be clear. Maybe I misheard, but I thought it was when we were discussing the first one, I thought it was going back for first reader, which I didn't fully understand, but that's why I was questioning it now. So then both of these should be going back for second reader. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, so the next item is item C1. Um, I believe I didn't make sense. Okay, yes. Policy 8260, Authority of Individual Board Members. And for that, I call on Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. Um, policy 8260 uh, is being brought to you pursuant to your board policy 
8130. It is on the seven year cycle for uh, review. Staff is not recommending any changes to this policy and is asking that the policy be readopted. What you have in the analysis uh, is an explanation of what other local school systems do or local boards do, which is essentially the same. The policy simply indicates that individual board members do not act individually, that you act as a collective and your authorities in the collective. One addition to the analysis, which did not exist in the same form seven years ago, is your, uh, your board handbook. Your handbook does specifically speak to individual board member authority. So with that, the, uh, the staff is simply asking for readoption. There are no changes recommended. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Do we have any um, discussion on policy 8260? This is board member from Pong. I do have a question on that one because it says in an analysis that the word chair was substituted for the word president. Is that just in the handbook? Because I didn't see any reference to the chair or president in the actual policy. Sure, at the last, uh, and that had to do with the changes that were done before. So the changes that were done in um, uh, initially as part of the uh, the last review was in response to the legal changes uh, in the statute that indicated that the there was no longer a board president, there's a board chair. But I guess so the question is, is, is that contained in the handbook and not in the policy? Because in the policy, neither board nor I'm sorry, neither chair nor president. Like I didn't see that language at all. Or was it removed? It must have been removed. So that is my error, Ms. Frempong. I will make sure that the analysis is corrected as it goes forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other um, question or discussion? Okay, if there are no suggestions to staff, then the policy will remain unchanged. The committee's report will reflect that policy 8260 is moved forward for first reader as presented. Next thank item. You. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is item D1, new business annual review requirements. Policy is scheduled for review for 2023-2024. Um, and for that, I call on Ms. Howie. Thank you. Members of the committee, the next three items uh, for your review are part of your annual review cycle. Uh, each year, uh, pursuant to Superintendent's Rule 8130, the superintendent brings to the, the board the list of policies to be reviewed in the upcoming year. The practice that we have established through PRC is that prior to going to the board for information about what's on that seven year schedule, that as well, the, uh, the committee will be uh, permitted the opportunity to add to this list and basically structure the work of the committee for the upcoming school year. I wanna highlight a few things. <clears throat> so, Last school year, the policies that are reviewed, I'm sorry, for this current school year, 2022-23, we have 43 policies that were to be reviewed, which included a significant backlog going back to 21-22. We've been able this year to be extremely successful, in my opinion, in getting through the backlog that existed. So you do not have the same backlog going forward, the same volume going forward in 23-24. You have in the first section uh, those policies that are scheduled to be reviewed in 22 or 23-24. I've given you as well four policies that uh, for your consideration that the superintendent um, is going to reserve discretion on to take out of this list. Those are the ones that are in the green bar. What green bars, those are four policies, as I indicated, 3130, 3520, 3532, and 5410. Those policies were scheduled to be reviewed 
during 1617 and because of uh, a meeting cancellation had to be taken over and were reviewed first thing in 1718. So they do not necessarily have to be reviewed this year, again, depending on the other exigencies on the, the board schedule. With respect to the policies that have carried over from this school year, 1100 was recommitted, 4100 as well, 5200, 3540. Uh, we that was put on the calendar last year, and the committee was waiting for a work group to be established by the board. The work group was never established, so there was no policy that could be written absent the work group. And 5550 and 5560 were placed on the calendar by uh, board members last year. Uh, we were unable to get to those policies this year. So that is the extent of the carryover for 23-24. And with that, um, I'm available to answer any questions. And I understand that board members or committee members may have certain policies that they wanted added to the list. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I, it looks like the, a, a, a few of the policies that were questioned by other board members that there we all um, sort of uh, over the course of the past several several board meetings have discussed were included, which was policy 1280 for the boundary study. Um, what was the other one? Let's see here. And 5550, which you already mentioned was up for review anyway. Um, it was placed on the calendar this year at the request of board members. It's just that yes. it never got discussed. There was never, um, there were weren't parameters that were provided when it was placed back on the count. OK, thank you. Um, what else do I have here? Also, I believe that we wanted to that, that another board member requested that we look over the cell phone policy, which I believe is 5552. Again, I know it was recently reviewed. Um, I think the question was if the policy itself needed to change or if it was more of the implementation of the policy. So that may be something that we need to discuss to discuss in a future meeting. Um, and along with 1280 for the boundary study, um, if I have the number correct, I believe it's policy 7610 regarding communication protocols for the closure process for schools. Um, that came about during our discussion regarding closing Golden Ring, Golden Ring Middle School. And I believe the question was whether or not we should include the feeder schools that we um, include in our communication protocols should include the elementary school feeder schools into the middle to feed into the middle schools for that uh, process. I'm sorry, if you'll allow me to check the number just to make sure, sure. the sure. number is correct. And yes, members of the boards or members of the committee, 7610 is your um, permanent closure of a school building policy. So is it that you wanted communication, you want to discuss putting communication protocols in that particular policy, correct? Yes, or staff recommendation if it should go in a, in, in a different policy. Sure. And then um, we also had in the budget committee, there was a request for staff to um, make a recommendation regarding whether a policy is needed as far as including the student uh, member of the board, requiring them or encouraging them to participate in the budget committee. Mm -hmm. um, and I did speak to board member Dominowski to get some clarification about this, and she did she did um, indicate that she want, she would like staff to make a re recommendation regarding whether or not a policy may be needed um, to include for the student board member in the budget committee um, since they have since the student member has now gained more um, has gained the right to vote on the budget if that may be something that is recommended 
as far as our participation in the budget committee itself. And, okay, and as far as whether or not you need an explicit policy in yes. order to, okay. All right, so the cell phone policy 7610, and you said that 1280 was already. Yes, okay. yes, you had it on the list. Mm -hmm. um, and then another point, uh, one for me specifically, and I'm not sure this may apply to policy um, 5550 or 5500. Um, at one of the area advisory committees, it was brought up that um, the, the new use of AI. Um, and if we may need to add some language into whatever policy addresses cheating um, for students, if we need to include some language regarding AI um, in that policy. So I would think that um, academic dishonesty is part of 5550 and okay. 5560. So it could be that uh, the language in um, one of those policies could be expanded. <laughs> OK, thank you. And um, do any other um, committee members have anything to add at this point? Um, this is board member from Pong. Just a question more so about process of this. So um, two separate policies. First one, 0, 100, which is equity, um, mm -hmm. is already currently up. So that's great. I was going to ask about that one, but that is a policy that has no rules. So as we, um, as part of PRC, we review the policy piece. Um, is Are the rules done at the same time? Are they updated, I should say, at the same time, or is that done on a separate time frame or, or calendar? So the normal process, to the extent that anything is normal, Ms. Frempong, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that there usually are two trains running. So the policy track runs and the the staff basically receives the vision from the from the board policy. And then we'll uh, we'll write a rule to accompany it once the board policy is approved. So the policy, when it is being reviewed around the same time, you won't see it at the at the same meeting where the policy is approved because the board may have changes. It usually comes a few meetings after. I'm aware that staff is working on a rule for zero one hundred. It um, staff's been working very hard on it uh, in the equity office. So uh, as to whether or not it will be done before the changes to the policy, now that the policy's on review this year, um, it will come after the changes to the policy are implemented. So it, there will be a rule. Note that not every policy has a rule and not every rule has a policy. Okay, great. And I guess so the same thing would also apply to 1280. I took a quick look just at that policy. Um, there's really not a lot to the policy. Again, it's more, it looks like in the rule itself as far as how a boundary study is, is conducted. So mm -hmm. we would get updated rules after I guess we review the policy same after, thing there. You know, after the policy is approved because if there's a shift that the board wants that is going to necessitate a shift in what the in how the policy is implemented you would want to see that in the superintendent's rule and you should expect to see that in the accompanying rule but it won't be at the same meeting once upon a time we did do them at the same meeting you had when we had three readers at the third reader because you there generally weren't changes by then the rule was also presented as information but what we found when we went to two readers <coughs> was that there were changes that could be made at the board meeting so we wanted to be able to be a little bit more nimble and adjust so that any changes to the uh, superintendent's role were held until the final board policy was approved by the full board. OK, got it. Thank you. Surely.
Thank you. Ms. Harvey, do you have any other recommendations or discussions as far as policies to review? I uh, know the policies that I was interested in are actually on the list, so. Great, thank you. OK, so. Um, is there anything that we need to do as far as I, I we discussed this? Is there anything I need to do as far as moving forward or um, processing no, this at this point? No, okay. ma because uh, essentially this is it's a superintendent's report. Yes. Uh, so what? Uh, what will be included in the July 11th information as an information item will be this report. It will be adjusted so that uh, it is clear that there are certain policies, specifically um, 7610 and I believe it's 5561 cell phone will be added. There'll be a separate ban added at the request of PRC members. OK, thank you very Back. much. Uh, Chair Pumphrey, this is Mrs. Harvey. I do have one sure. question. The items, the policies in green that are at the discretion of the superintendent, mm -hmm. does that mean that we'll just, we'll go through, we'll skip over those, the superintendent will notify us that they're pulling them, or are they actually being, how does that work? So um, when I was, when, when Ms. Uh, Wash and I were doing the schedule, we thought that in terms of the weight that the committee could bear, that um, it's possible that the committee could bear these additional four uh, in the information item that goes forward on uh, July 11th. You'll either see these or you won't. So when we work through the schedule, but I think based, well, I'm not going to say, but when we work through the schedule, we'll be able to determine whether or not the committee uh, actually has the time to do these four. So they'll, if staff believes that we can get through these with these four, they'll be on the report for the 11th. If not, we'll move them to um, the 24-25 school year. Does that Great, make sense, Ms. Harvey? Yep, yep, I understand completely. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next on our agenda is item D2, Appeals and Hearings Handbook. And again, we I call him Ms. Howie. Thank you, committee members. Uh, so this document is actually uh, the brainchild of the Policy Review Committee. So this is something that was conceived um, and um, completely uh, implemented by the Policy Review Committee. As you know, members of the committee, uh, the, you as local board members have the ability not only to sit as a public body, but you also sit in your quasi judicial function. What the committee found, and I'm not remembering which year we, um, the, the committee directed staff to, to create this, but what was discovered was that many uh, appellants just simply didn't know how the, the, the policies on appeals worked because so many were parents or unrepresented employees. So staff was directed to uh, publish a guide for members, for persons who had appeals uh, so that they would understand how the policies worked and understand how the appeals worked. So we try every year to, to make it a little bit more user friendly it started out as a much shorter document. It is a long and, and dense document. We um, struggle with making sure that the information, while accurate, is also comprehensible uh, and understandable for a lay person. So that's, where, that's the reason for some of the changes that we're recommending going forward for the 23-24 school year. As I said, it's a rather, and as you can see, it's a rather dense document. <laughs> we actually had um, a non-attorney look at the document this year to see whether or not it made sense. And that's um, part of the reason for some of the changes. So you see on page two, uh, lines 40 and 44, we changed the word proceedings to hearings because they really are hearings and proceedings sounds more like um, an attorney as opposed to hearings, which is what individuals are going to be going through. 
Um, we wanted to make sure, as you see on page four, that uh, it, the, it's clear who we're talking about. So we're talking about a hearing examiner. That's why we added that language. We also explained um, in line 46 and 47 uh, that the ability to provide necessary documents or necessary evidence, what evidence meant. So documents as well as testimony. You go to um, page five, uh, two items that came up this year because of virtual here or one because of virtual hearings and one because of uh, concerns expressed. One has to do with the fact that the hearing examiner sometimes wanted documents beforehand in virtual hearings. That is not usually an issue with in person because we exchange documents at that time. Um, but um, line 50 is um, an expectation that the hearing examiners as well as some staff members have expressed uh, because of uh, changing views of the world and changing views of and necessity for um, staff safety. So um, security is going to be provided. <coughs> uh, some of the recommendations by hearing examiners um, you'll see on page seven, line 27 to 29, and we do send this to your hearing examiners because as they conduct hearings, they see issues. Um, so uh, we wanted it clear that the hearing examiner includes a notice of appeal rights in all of um, his or her decisions and all of their decisions. And then uh, what you see when a hearing uh, when an issue is appealed to you. And one of the things that you are able to see, as you are aware, you get the transcript, you get the evidence, but we wanted members of, uh, member appellants also to know that that's what they're getting. Um, we wanted it as well, and this was a recommendation from a hearing examiner, line 32, page eight. We wanted to make sure it was clear, not necessarily that the board would um, dismiss cases because that's not always the case, uh, but the board, if individuals don't show up for oral argument, could opt to uh, to dismiss the case without uh, and decide the case without any input. And then I believe that is, those are the major changes that were made this year. Um, Something that's not included in this document, but is included and will be included in the online document that was recommended last year is a map of Greenwood campus because not every parent or appellant is familiar with Greenwood campus and given that this is where they have to come uh, when there are in person hearings, unless there are more heightened security concerns and then we have them over in circuit court. <clears throat> but at this point, um, we believe or we're, we, we continue to try, it's a work in progress, uh, to make sure that we are balanced between making sure that people have the information they need to exercise their statutory rights and their rights under your policy, and making sure that uh, it's understandable. So with that, I'm available to answer questions about this document. Oh, and I'm sorry, the document is also translated. Uh, when it is placed online. Thank you very much. Um, is there any discussion or questions regarding the recommended changes to the appeals and hearings handbook? This is board member from Pong. I have questions. Um, so the I'm glad to see that it does allow um, for the people to bring someone with them and it doesn't necessarily have to be an attorney. So I right. see where that was noted. Um, I did notice that it said that there has to be notification. Um, what is the notification? Like, is there a, a minimum number of or oh, what is it set number of days prior to the hearing that they have to notify? I didn't I don't know if I missed that. Which notification to which notification do you refer Ms. from? Uh, so where it says that they can bring, let me find it. I read it. It said that they could bring someone um, with them and it didn't have to be an attorney. It could be like a designated person, but it said something about having to notify. 
I didn't. Right. Write what okay. Page so that was on. you might be in page two. Um, would that be two B? Page two. Or I'm sorry, B. D is in David. Um, so if you choose to be represented by an attorney, you're required to notify the board scheduler. Is that it? I think yes. Was there a a um a calendar like as far as two days prior or anything like that with that notification? Did I just miss that? No. So um sometimes what happens is that parents may let me back up. Um so when an appeal is noted from a superintendent's decision to the board, the uh, the notice, the request for an appeal, I should say, when that is uh, filed with the board office, it goes directly to the board office. <laughs> the board office then sends it to the office of law to the, the person who scheduler, schedules, that's a scheduler in this office. So, as to and sometimes it's just the parent um, who is who we know is um, seeking the appeal. We don't know if there's anyone else. So uh, sometimes when the scheduler reaches out to the parent, the parent says, well, I have an attorney. Well, we need to to know that could be in the form of a letter. It could be an email stating that I now have an attorney. Uh, it is if you want the individual to represent you, you would want the scheduler to know so that the, the scheduler can reach out to that individual in sufficient time. Uh, if it's the day before and the individual says, well, now I have counsel, counsel can ask for um, a postponement if counsel's not available, but we do not say you have to tell us within X number of school days or whatever. We do not do that. Oh, OK, good. Um, and then the other piece was if there is a postponement that's required, I saw where it said 10 days. Um, I think 10 calendar days was required, but then there was another section saying something about five days for emergency. So is there a grace period like between five and 10 days or? So for emergencies, I mean, let, let's say you're you're ill. Um, or you uh, something happens that you have not anticipated, which is why it's considered an emergency. Our hearing examiners have been extremely gracious in allowing uh, appellants uh, when if they contact the hearing examiners as soon as they're aware, even if it's not within that five day period, grace period for emergencies, they've been they are want to to grant them, particularly if the individuals are unrepresented. OK, great. And then last question is. OK, so if, if the person doesn't show up, the hearing examiner will um, dismiss the case and then. Uh, or I'm sorry, that is it, something. It was something about what they can do, and I guess I just wasn't clear on um, then what happens after that. So does the person sure. understand that that's it? there's no more or do they still have, I guess, additional no. options? It, so let's let's say, for example, and this this has happened uh, that you you get to the hearing and. It is hard to overemphasize how careful the board scheduler is with notifying um, not only the uh, the parent or the um, the representative uh, and calling to follow up and we send in a notice to the individual, a hearing notice saying here are the directions, here, here's the time, here's who the hearing examiner is. We receive all of that prior to the hearing. And yes, we've had some days when and sometimes when we have hearing examiner, we have witnesses uh, from schools or offices, we have um, the superintendent's designee, we have a court reporter and we don't have an appellant. They just don't post. They do not show up. So some hearing examiners, what they'll do is they will entertain at that point a motion to dismiss from the superintendent. Some hearing examiners, what they will do is they'll ask to hear the superintendent's case since you have staff members there. Uh, they'll just ask the superintendent to present 
and they will make a recommendation based on the evidence presented. Those recommendations then come to you as the board. And they also go to the appellant to say, hey, you can appeal this and ask for oral argument. And there, there's been at least one case where I do recall an individual asked for oral argument because he wasn't available. Uh, and I, but I'm not recalling whether or not the board granted oral argument in that case. Uh, so they are given their rights um, with respect to what happens at the next level. And there are some hearing examiners will, will simply entertain a motion to dismiss, which in and of itself can go to the board for the board's final decision. Got it, thank you. Surely. Are there any other questions or discussion at this point? Okay, if there are no corrections and no objection, the hearings handbook will be presented to the board as an information item at the July 11th, 2023 meeting. The next on our agenda is item D3. Editing conventions. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, so I had an error message pop up on my screen. I apologize. Um, editing right. conve conventions. <laughs> uh, for, that, for that, I call again on Ms. Howie. Thank you. Uh, so, members of the committee, as you know, I am a committed bureaucrat. And what bureaucrats love are rules so that things look the same. So, that's pretty much in a nutshell what the editing conventions are. Uh, for your information in executive content, you have the um, the editing conventions that will be presented if approved as inf as information as an information item to the the board. Even though we titled these correctly <coughs> in the the name of the the document, uh, we missed the year. It should be editing conventions for 23-24. So that is the actual document that will go forward. The only change is the year. We simply um, tried to clarify some things for staff. Um, these are the editing conventions that are sent to members of staff when they're revising policies so that they know exactly which format you want um, the, uh, the policies to be presented to you, uh, in which format you, you, find, you deem acceptable. So this is where the Oxford comma <laughs> gets uh, gets logged out. Um, this is also uh, what we did on page one was clarify um, the committee's role that the committee um, makes recommendations. We've included readoption or deletion, which is true. It just wasn't clearly stated here. Um, the only change we've made uh, or the only refinement I guess we've made given that the Oxford comma is now um, back in favor is to ask staff uh, when an Oxford comma is included to make sure that it's highlighted uh, so that you would be able to see as the board that the Oxford comma has been included. But we're not recommending any other changes, um, no other changes to uh, the font size, which still remains 13. And don't re I don't remember why we did 13 instead of 14 at the time. But that's what we did. Times New Roman is the standard font. Uh, there are standard um, terms that are used. Those are all outlined here so that whenever you see a policy, it would conform, conform with these editing conventions. <laughs> Available to answer any questions as my voice holds out or Ms. Ms. Wash can answer questions. <clears throat> is there any discussion on the recommended changes to the editing conventions? If there are no corrections and no objection, the editing conventions will be provided to the board as information at the July 11, 2023 meeting. And now we Thank are at. Items. Thank you. And now we are um, at item E, committee general good faith, good. Excuse me, committee general good and welfare. Um, the floor is now open to members of the committee to discuss issues of concern. I must em emphasize that this is not a time to conduct business as there has not been notice provided as required by the Open Meetings Act. 
Um, I would just I just would like to say thank you to the um, to staff for always providing the detailed policy analysis for us, both when the policies are vote first presented to PRC and also um, when they come back after first review with input from the rest of the board as well as um, the public. Um, I think your thoughtful scheduling for PRC and those detailed policy analysis is what helped allowed um, PRC to work efficiently for the past several months. So thank you for that. Um, and I, one other thing I should have brought up when Ms. Uh, when Board Member Fen Prong mentioned um, uh, how the rules are are processed after a policy is um, approved by the board, uh, we did have a board member request regarding um, the status of a rule regarding that will relate to policy 0500, which is workplace bullying that I believe was recently approved by the board. Um, I don't know if that's something that we would ask you to provide status on or if that should go to the superintendent. I can provide you a status on it. Uh, staff is, and it, it's HR staff, would be responsible for any rule to be um, implemented. Uh, that policy also requires that there be training implemented. So staff I know is working at this moment on training modules to make sure that the staff is compliant with the policy. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anyone else? OK, so the next meeting of the Policy Review Committee is scheduled for Monday, September 18th, 2023 at 430 p.m. And seeing there is no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. You too. Thank you, committee members. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night.